Suppose you are given the task of making a bracket like this. It looks pretty simple. It's five by seven inches. It has a half inch hole. And it has a slot that's slightly larger than a half inch so that it can slide over a half inch bolt as the plate is rotated. If a customer just handed this plate to you, you would have to take some measurements to get everything correct, but I'm going to show you how to draw this now in Design Edge. The first thing I'm going to do is move it over to the left so that we can recreate it over here on the right. By taking measurements, we determined that the rectangle is five by seven inches, so let's draw that. I'll say W, click anywhere, and say at, 5,7 and what that does is that creates the rectangle based on the exterior dimensions of this one. The next thing we need to do is click on this hole. Well, you don't click on the hole, you would measure it because the customer would hand you a metal plate and you determine that the hole is exactly one half of an inch in diameter. And you need to know where that hole is located both horizontally and vertically on the plate. There's a couple of different ways to do that, you can do measurements. You can say control D from the center here to the perpendicular here, and that'll tell you that it is one inch out. And you can control D from the center here to the perpendicular here, and see that it's three and a half inches down. And you can go control D from the center to the perpendicular down here and see that it's also three and a half inches. So you know that it's centered horizontally and it's one inch in, the center of the hole is one inch in from the left side of the plate. Well, that's a lot of work. So I prefer to use drawing tools to do my measuring when I can because it's faster. So I'll say Q center here, perpendicular, Q center here, perpendicular. Now I can see that since this is a circle and this is the center of the circle, the top and the lower quadrant are touching the rectangular frame. That tells me that it's centered vertically and I didn't even take a measurement, but it's obviously three and a half inches because it's a seven inch circle that fits inside of a seven inch plate. To measure the distance from the side, I simply use this circle Typing F8 will tell me that it's a two inch diameter circle and therefore it's one inch radius from the center of the hole to the side of the plate. It's a very quick way to determine the location of a hole. So I'll redraw that. I'll say Q.5 enter and put it on the midpoint of this line here and then I will M move it click my mouse and say at one comma zero and that moves it over the one inch that it needs to be. Now the distance from here to here to the center of this, you don't measure to this edge or to this edge, you measure to the center. The distance is three inches. If it's on a computer, you can check that measurement. But if you have it in your hand, you can use a ruler or whatever and you can come up with the, the determination that the center of this groove is, is a groove is three inches away from this hole. You would also want to measure the width of this groove because it's going to be a little wider than the bolt that it rides on. If this is a half inch bolt, you can bet that this groove is going to be a little bit wider. So you would measure it. I'm going to change the height of my text to make it a little easier to see. I'll say distance from the quadrant of this circle to the quadrant of this circle and it's 0.52. So the other thing we need to know is what is the angle of this and where does it start and where does it end because this could easily be in a different position on the plate. The only way to determine that it is centered one of the ways to determine that it is centered is to do a an angular measurement on it. So I would take a line from the center here 
to the center of the, uh, to, or to the quadrant of the outside of this curve. And a line from the center here to the center of this circle. It's not a full circle, but it is enough of a curve that the computer can find the center of it. And by doing that, I can go control D and determine that that is exactly 62 degrees. Double that, of course, would be 124. Line, center, to center. And again, the dimension with control D, 62 degrees. So we know that this is not off on a position like so or in the other direction because the horizontal line is the middle of the curve and the center of each of the round ends is exactly 62 degrees from horizontal. It's also 0.52 inches, so I'm going to say Q.52, enter, and I'll put it on the center of this circle. Now you can see there are two circles, a larger one, well, this is the half inch circle, and this is the one that's 0.52. So now I'm going to move that circle from the center on an angle of 62 degrees, comma, three inches. And I will say image from the center of this circle, the mirror image, O ortho, control, hold down the control key and click your mouse, and now you have two images. They're both 0.52 inches in diameter, and they're 62 degrees north and south, or 62 degrees positive and negative Y. If you want to check that, you can say line, center, to center, to center, and do your measurement, control D, and it will come out to be 124 degrees. Now that you have those two drawn, the next step is to draw the curves based on the center of the circle. Well, you can't draw from quadrant to quadrant because the, uh, the, the context points, the tangent point on these circles is not on the quadrant. It's on the tangent of the larger circle that makes up this design. So I would do line, center to center, to center. And then use X, my trim extend tool, to extend those lines to the outside of those circles. What that gives us is one, two, three, and four intersections. There are a couple of different ways to draw the curves of this arch. And you run into issues where the geometry doesn't quite touch the circle correctly and it doesn't trim out correctly. But one way is to use your arc tool and to go from the center of your tool to the intersection, I, of that white line and follow it around to the intersection of that line. Spacebar repeat, repeats the tool C center to the intersection of the white line and the intersection I of the white line. By getting rid of the angles, you can then trim out the top and the bottom and join. And that gives you your curve. Now, if you didn't need a curved slot, but instead you needed a series of holes with definite positions for um, a rotating or pivoting arm or something to lock into, 
what you would do is you would draw your uh, hole the correct diameter, which in this case happens to be 0.52, and you would draw a series of them and then fit them to a path. And that would give you your um, uh, correct drawing. So we're going to do this again. I'll just grab this and copy it so we don't go through that a second time. Copy it over to here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this path. Another way to do this is to draw a path through this through the center of what you need uh, you, to get the the angle from this point to this point I'm gonna say Q center here six enter and what that does is that gives me an angle to the intersection there and line center to the intersection there. Now that angle is going to be slightly different. We were working with 124, but this goes to the outside of the circle, so it's 133.9. When you divide that in half, you get 66.95 degrees. So I'm going to do a line from the center here angle negative 66.95 degrees comma 3 and what that'll do is that will reproduce this line I will use my arc tool here and remember that the angle is either negative or positive angle uh, so you do you don't add them together you have to give it from the zero point how far you want to go in the other direction since we've gone 66.95 negative we're gonna go 66.95 positive so I'll say center here end and then 66.95 degrees positive and that gives us this line the next thing to do is to draw your circle Q 0.52 and see how many do you need along that line well we need eight we need eight spaces along that line I'll say okay there's eight Control V, fit to path, 50% up, adjust space to fitting. Okay. And then I'll delete my path. And you can see that if I group this, I'll move this from the center of this circle to the center of this circle. And it puts the holes exactly where I would need them. One thing to note about fitting circles to a path is it does not fit the end circles from the center point. It fits them through the shape to the end of the path. This is why we had to take that 124 degree angle, which only went this far. And we had to reestablish that angle here to get us to the end of the path that those circles would lay on because the circle would start at the end and continue all the way through. I do offer free online training for Design Edge software um, using your computer and mine connected together over the internet. Uh, we go through a Zoom room, which I'm currently struggling with, but I'm going to find a solution to a problem of multiple screen sharing issues. Uh, there's also freeconference.com, which works fairly well. 
And uh, as I said, I do this for free. I will get online with you and I'll help you work out one issue with a design that you're struggling with, or I'll train you on how to use the tools in DesignEdge more efficiently to accomplish what you want to do. Um, if I come out to your home or business, I do have a $700 per day, per training day, fee uh, to cover my costs. Now that includes my cost of driving out to your location and hotel and food and the maintenance of my home during my absence. So a three day training session would cost you $2,100, uh, but it would take, uh, let's say you lived in Montana, it would be a four day drive out there and four days back. That's also covered in that $2,100 fee. So I only charge you for the time I'm actually sitting with you and training you on your computer. Training sessions are anywhere from eight to 10 hours or longer if you wish. Uh, as long as we can both stay conscious <laughs> and, and we're still thinking clearly, I don't mind working with you uh, from morning till night. So um, send your information to me, your name, address, phone number. Uh, tell me what table you have and what software you have along with any software upgrades that you are using. Um, and uh, tell me what you want to learn. Give me some idea of what you want to know. Or we can talk over the phone, either way. Send it to addmenow at mail.com. That's mail.com, not gmail. It's addmenow at mail.com, and I'll be more than happy to get with you and help you to learn how to make money in metal art, as PlasmaCam likes to say.